If you've got a newish Garmin watch, you're getting a bit of an early Christmas present today in the form of the latest quarterly updates. Uh, the quarterly updates, the firmware updates, if you will, are where Garmin's been dropping tons of new features every, well, as the name implies, a quarter to their newer watches. In the case of this quarterly update, it applies to the Phoenix 7 series, both the Pro and the non-Pro, the Epic series, the 400 255, 265, 955, 965, Venue 3, Vivo Active 5, and uh, I I think that's about it. Uh, sometimes it also includes the Instinct 2 series, though that's got some kind of minor stuff and isn't technically part of today's update yet. Uh, now, within that, there are different features for different watches. You didn't, you didn't think this was gonna be easy, did you? In fact, Garmin's got an entire chart you can see right here to try to decode all this as to what's all coming to which watches. Uh, I just wanna call out a couple of quick ones before we talk deeply about the skin temperature side of things. Uh, number one is that all these watches now have nap tracking. So if you wanted to sleep on the job or just simply sleep to recover, uh, you can do that and be properly tracked. And with that, there's the body battery enhancements. Essentially, this just shows you which factors are impacting your body battery score and by how much. It's a handy little thing. Uh, meanwhile, the Venue 3 series finally gets running power. That's something that's long overdue. Uh, but they got not just running power, but uh, the running efficiency metrics as well, all from the wrist, by the way. No extra sensors are required. Uh, the rest of the watches in this list already had that. Uh, in addition, there's a bunch of new sport profiles. Those on the screen right here, again, depends on which watch you're coming from and which watch gets them it's someday we'll get all sport profiles on all watches but today is today is not that day uh, and then also there's a new workouts app so if you have structure workouts that are planned on your calendar for example an upcoming run or swim or things like that you can just go straight to the workouts app and find that structure workout there and see what's what's coming and then that'll launch that workout right from there Meanwhile, if you're on an Android phone with your Garmin watch, you'll get images onto or text images um, directly on the watch shown there. Uh, for iPhone users, Apple doesn't allow that. So Apple does not allow third party uh, hardware devices to see those images. Uh, so that's something that Garmin can't implement, otherwise they certainly would. Also, if you're on the 965 or 265, as well as the Venue 3, so those are the AMOLED versions uh, of their Forerunner, et cetera, counterparts, uh, then you are getting Redshift. Redshift is something that introduced on the Epix Pro and then came to the Epix and is now on all the AMOLED kind of high-end watches except for the Vivo Active 5. Uh, and Redshift basically just turns your screen red. It's like submariner mode. If you want to be, want to feel like you're, you're diving deep in the sub, you can do that. And actually a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting and useful, now is a great time to whack the like or subscribe button. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. So. With all that said, let's talk about skin temperature sensing or wrist temperature sensing. Uh, this is only available on the watches that have the new Gen 5 uh, Elevate hardware. So basically, if you could have got ECG enabled a month or so ago um, with your watch, then that'll be supported here as well. In particular, that is the Phoenix 7 Pro Series, the Epix Pro Series, the Venue 3, and the Tactic 7 OLED. Not the Tactic 7, not OLED, the MIP-based one, the older one, slightly older one anyways, because it has the older hardware. If you look on the back of the watch, you can see the difference here uh, between the Epix Pro with that new optical heart rate sensor, and then the 4965 with the older optical heart rate sensor. It's this new one that's required for skin temperature sensing. Uh, now, once you've got this firmware installed on your watch, again, that could take a couple days till that happens, you'll start to build up that baseline. Uh, the baseline takes three days to build up and it's created on a per watch basis. So if you were using the Venue 3 for a few weeks and then at Christmas time, you get upgraded to the uh, Epix Pro, that baseline technically starts over again because it's on that watch. So after three days, you'll see in the sleep section of Garmin Connect, uh, your deviation from your skin temperature baseline shown right there. Uh, and from there, you can then trend that over longer periods of time, for example, seven days, four weeks, a year, et cetera, uh, and then see those that little variation in the chart there. In fact, you can see that on my chart somewhere up here right now. You'll also notice that gap there. Uh, that's when I switched to a watch that didn't have uh, the beta on it, uh, which is notable because if you've been running the beta on your watches for the last four to six weeks, the public beta uh, for the Epix Pro and the Phoenix 7 Pro and the Venue 3, uh, then you will actually have all that data magically show up in your account today. Uh, so that beta was available roughly like October 20th or so. Uh, and from that point forward, it's been collecting data this entire time. You just couldn't see it, uh, but now you can see it in your Garmin Connect account. Note that this data is only for sleeping. It's not for uh, workout skin temperature. So for that, you need something like the core body temperature sensor. I've done some stuff on that in the past, uh, but that's for workouts. This is purely for sleep-based uh, data gathering. And you may then ask, what is the use of this data? 
And that's a bit of a trickier question to answer. In terms of Garmin's usage of this data, it uh, mostly doesn't really exist right now. Um, what other companies are using it for, uh, for example, Whoop, uh, I've got the Whoop band up here, or Aura, I've got the Aura ring right there. Uh, they're using it for ovulation cycle period prediction. So basically to figure out your period and tell you when your period's gonna happen. Uh, that's not something that Garmin's doing today. Garmin does do period prediction, but it's only using the data that you've logged. So you log your symptoms, uh, uh, and then from there, we'll go ahead and figure out uh, when your next period is going to be. Uh, inversely, Apple, for example, also does wrist-based uh, temperature sensing, uh, and they use it for historical-based period, like not prediction, but retrospectively figure out where, when your period was, but they're not looking ahead forward based. And then you got Fitbit, which also collects this data, but isn't using it either for uh, period prediction. Still, I suspect that we'll see Garmin uh, probably introduce some form of period prediction at some point down the road. Uh, they've long been kind of one of the leaders in uh, gathering uh, women's health data from this standpoint, uh, in terms of logging and tracking and things like that. But over the last year or two, uh, as Whoop and Aura introduced the period prediction, Garmin didn't have anything that fit that bill. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if, you know, over the next few months or half a year or so, if they come back and kind of uh, add that feature. Now, if we look beyond period prediction, then how else can it be useful? Uh, and there is research showing that in terms of sleep stages, they do correlate to shifts in temperature, uh, but that's done primarily in a lab setting. Uh, taking that out into the outside world is really challenging. And the reason is that, as you'll see if you start playing with this data, the temperature of the room and how deep you bury yourself into the sheets and all that kind of stuff does directly impact these readings. Uh, if you are like right now in my house, uh, it's cold as F outside. Uh, and as a result, uh, we don't have the heat up very high because it costs a lot. So therefore uh, our house is cooler and my wrist values will show lower on those colder nights. Inversely, if I fly across the ocean right now and go camping on a beach in the Caribbean, uh, it's gonna show higher because it's hotter in that climate. Uh, so if you're traveling a bunch of different hotels with different you know, heat settings that will impact the readings that you're getting. Uh, so again, those are all areas where it's a bit tricky for companies to denoise that data and make sense of it. Still, I think this is one of those areas similar to what we saw with respiration rate during COVID where down the road, they'll start to figure out how they can leverage that data. As we saw quite clearly during COVID, people could look at respiration rate and start to trend and go, oh wow, usually when there's a big spike in respiration rate, that is typically followed by some form of sickness, COVID or otherwise. Uh, and it was fascinating to kind of have that recognition of that data. Again, a spike in respiration does not mean you've got COVID, it just means there's something to look at. Uh, and the same can also be true when it comes to skin temperature data and figuring out how that can be correlated to different things. But again, that's all stuff for a, a different day and time. In the meantime, if you did find this video interesting or useful, go ahead and like the like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.